Well, welcome to another episode of Christ and Culture. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today I'm driving along in my car, and I wanted to just touch on the topic that we have been dealing with in the last few episodes, and that is the uh, current state of Christianity in Uganda. And what I didn't talk about before, and don't be distracted by me, I'm just going to be uh, watching the road here, and I'm going to be talking, but I think you can uh, pick up on what I'm doing. Um, the state of the Christian church in Uganda, we've covered a little bit different aspects of it, but today I want to touch on another area that you may have heard about in the news. If you remember back about five or ten years ago, it might have been five years ago, could have been as far back as ten years ago, the Uganda government was heavily influenced by some Christians who went to Uganda, missionaries. And the Uganda government was wanting to adopt some just and righteous laws concerning the homosexuality, what to do. Now, Africans are generally very traditional in their moral values. Homosexuality is a grave, grave sin, and almost all Africans do agree on that. But today there is a liberalism that's creeping in, a sort of a really um, insidious immoral impulse and a lot of the foreign aid that's sent to African nations like Uganda, the one we're talking about today, they have these strings by the U.S. government, especially under the last administration, and that is if you didn't support the whole LGBT movement, you wouldn't be getting as much foreign aid from the Western nations, especially the U.S. Well, the Ugandan government decided to go ahead and pass some very common sense and by today's standards strict laws against homosexuality. They wanted to really not have that in their nation. They didn't want to have the spread of homosexuality in their nation and they saw that if you have the LGBT movement endorsed by the government you would have trouble in your country and so they were influenced by some godly Christian missionaries, and one of them was a, na a guy named Scott Lively, a pastor, Scott Lively, and he gave some lectures at these uh, Ugandan uh, governmental committee meetings. And lo and behold, his lectures highly influenced the government, and you have to understand the situation in Uganda right now. We learned a little bit about this with Mel McGinnis and Roy Miller uh, coming back and talking to us in the last few episodes of Christ and Culture about Uganda. Uganda is a largely predominantly Christian nation. Uh, 25, 30 million people in Uganda. And it's a largely Christian dominated nation. And Christianity is fairly out and open and is able to permeate the whole uh, government structure. So you have government officials who are very open about their Christian faith and have Bible studies and all kinds of different Christian activities. And so it would make sense that when you have a, a government that has a lot of Christians in it and then you have the population that is predominantly Christian, that Christian morality would be something that's expressed in the law. And lo and behold, Uganda passed some very sound and sane um, laws about homosexuality. And it's basically forbidden. You cannot carry on in these perverse ways without penalties. And Scott Lively, the Reverend Scott Lively, was a large part of influencing Ugandan laws. And in fact, irony, he actually wanted the Ugandan government to moderate a little bit of its harsher laws uh, because uh, according to the African traditional morality, uh, there's no tolerance of homosexuality. And in fact, they were talking about uh, the death penalty to someone convicted of this crime. But Scott Lively, as a Christian, 
wanted to have that law a little bit moderated, but he wasn't uh, any less um, firm on how wrong this was. And so there was this big controversy when it got back to the United States that there was a Christian missionary pastor over there influencing Uganda. Scott Lively returns home to the United States, his homeland, and he is sued by the state of, I think it was Connecticut or Massachusetts, state of Connecticut maybe, for crimes against humanity, for going over there and teaching morality and instructing on the morality and how bad homosexuality is, explaining from the Bible, explaining from science, and he was actually brought forth a lawsuit against him to be tried in the court, international courts, as a war crime or a criminal, an international criminal, because he went over there and told the Ugandan government and leaders the dangers of homosexuality based on research, biology, the diseases associated with this sin, the health crisis, biblical morality, the problem that it has on the youth, the confusion of the sexes. We're seeing that here in the United States all over. And I didn't ask Roy Miller and Mel McGinnis to go into this issue. I hadn't even thought of it when I was interviewing them, but it suddenly struck me, well, wait a minute, Uganda has been in the news before in respect to Christianity, and it's been in the news because of Christian morality in the nation. And so I started doing a little research, and lo and behold, I was able to uncover that Uganda was, in fact, consulting Christians and missionaries and the Christian organizations in the country concerning how to deal with homosexuality in society. And these Christians were simply giving the Ugandan leaders basic advice that everyone has been following, even in this country, up until the last 10 or 15 years. And that is that the government should do nothing to encourage this sin. Because if you encourage this perversity, you're going to get more of it, and you're going to get gender confusion. And this is exactly what has happened in our own country. So the criticisms that have come, the threats, the bullying that people have done against this Christian pastor, missionary pastor, it's just unconscionable. It's just outrageous that people would go after a Christian for simply teaching Christian doctrine. And not only just Christian doctrine, but common sense and important uh, teachings that were common knowledge just, uh, you know, five, uh, 10, 15 years ago. So we're going to look today at a video of Scott Lively, this Christian uh, missionary pastor, being interviewed by American Family Association, uh, Scott uh, Fisher, the interviewer. And we're going to look at this and as a little bit furtherance of our discussion on Christianity in Uganda. So let's, uh, let's roll that clip right now. By Michael Carl, talking about what's going, over, what's going on over in Uganda, about what its president has done. And, and before we jump into what the president has done, Scott, you've been involved in this Uganda controversy. The left has said a lot of things about you, made a lot of accusations about you and your advocacy for public policy with regard to homosexuality. And this article sort of clears some of the air about that. But tell us what you have done personally in Uganda and how what you have done has been misrepresented by the mainstream media. Well, I'm, I'm called the father of the Ugandan pro-family movement by my adversaries, primarily Al Gore's current TV, uh, labeled me that, trying to pin the responsibility for the so-called kill the gays bill uh, on me because I've been working in Uganda for about 10 years 
uh, I was the, the keynote speaker for the nation's first national pro-family conference that they held back in 2002. And I really did work to help build the pro-family movement there. Uh, but uh, in 2009, when I went to speak uh, at the conference that preceded the, the anti-homosexuality bill that they then subsequently came out with, and that unfortunately included uh, the death penalty uh, for a category called aggravated homosexuality. Uh, and uh, it was primarily focused at pedophilia. I don't support the death penalty for that either. Uh, but I was in opposition to that, uh, to, the, to the capital punishment aspect. I had focused uh, and encouraged them to shift their focus away from punishment toward therapy and prevention. And, uh, well, they just, they just followed typical African law, very harsh in the letter, although it's usually pretty lenient in the application. But uh, from, for the last two years, I've been under uh, quite a barrage of, of negative media and hostility. And, and frankly, this, uh, I, I'm the first person in the history of the country to be sued for crimes against humanity of persecution of homosexuals in our own federal court system. Uh, and uh, our hearing uh, our, uh, our hearing is set for January 7th for a motion to dismiss that. But anyway, that's what's been going on. So j- just to be clear, uh, Scott, and we, we brought you on to talk about this before, you are being sued in a court in the United States under the Crimes Against Humanity statute, I guess, of international law for something that you said for exercising yeah. your religious liberty and your freedom of speech in, in Uganda. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you want to know exactly what I said, download Redeeming the Rainbow from DefendTheFamily.com and read it, because that was my text and for, so the, let's, for, let, the, for the okay. seminar. And I want to button this down, because, Scott, you have been accused of going over to Uganda and advocating for the death penalty for homosexuals, and what you are saying is that is absolutely not true. You've been misrepresented by the true. mainstream media. Right, absolutely not true. I've been on record uh, from this from the very beginning, I, I, sent, I issued a report while I was there in 2009, before the bill was even drafted, defining what I had, what I had uh, done, describing the, uh, the position that I'd taken when I spoke to the members of parliament uh, there in their assembly hall. Uh, and, so, and, and, in this, and immediately when the bill came out, I was very clear I didn't support that. Uh, I've got uh, language that I suggested language that I, that I had presented to them. Uh, for, for therapy and and prevention, uh, that you know all this stuff is on record, and yet, uh, you know these guys are liars. The 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 leftist media, the especially the gay activists, they're just simply liars, uh, as we're t- as we're told in, in Romans one, that uh, malicious deceit is the is the order of this movement, and and they focused a tremendous amount of it at me over the past two years. Now, I understand, but, uh, Scott, and maybe this would be a result of your advocacy. I understand, according to BBC, that that death penalty provision has been removed from the bill that's under consideration. Yes, praise God. Now, I, I sent a letter to the uh, Ugandan parliament uh, and really making a very strong case, you know, that in their own interest that uh, that they shouldn't have that in there. Even, uh, you know, I'm not in favor of the of some of the other aspects of the bill either, but that's especially uh, heinous uh, to the world. You know, the, the, and, and it's going to give them nothing but trouble on the world stage to have that in there. You know, so it even goes, it's even going to run contrary to their, their own interests, even those that want to have it in there. You know, and I've uh, thought for some time, Scott, you know, the, the health risks of intravenous drug use are similar to they, what they are for homosexual behavior. You know that from the CDC, yes. the FDA, and I've suggested that we ought to follow the drug treatment community whatever policies they think we ought to adopt to help liberate people from their addiction to intravenous drug abuse, getting free from that, getting over that, dealing with that, those are the same kind of policies that we ought to pursue for people that are involved in the homosexual exactly. lifestyle. Well, one and, last question. Oh, go ahead, Scott. Just, just one second, Brian. Is that, that That's actually what I said to the members of Parliament. I gave my own example. I was an alcoholic and a drug addict for 16 years. At the end of that time period, I, I got a drunk driving ticket, and was going to lose my license, and the state of Oregon gave me the choice of doing therapy instead, and I did. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. I said, that, you know, homosexuality is a behavioral disorder that's not really that much different. It's very analogous to alcoholism, and and to have that kind of a treatment option 
for people that are struggling with this self-destructive behavior would be you could be the example to the world for this. You could be the first country to establish this as as national policy. Now, speaking of and, Uganda, they just celebrated their 50th anniversary of independence. We got just a couple minutes, Scott, but tell us yeah. what the president of Uganda did in connection with their 50th anniversary of independence. Well, what President Museveni did is a model for Christian leaders across the world. Uh, they held a 50-year you know, jubilee anniversary of the independence of the country, and President Museveni repented for the sins, his own sins, and the sins of the nation. And uh, in order to, to for, for Uganda to become a God-fearing country for the next next jubilee cycle of 50 years, and uh, just a tremendous. You know, if only the Christian leaders and the rest of the world would do this, uh, we would restore in the West uh, God's favor to well, our this, countries. You know, and it's pretty striking stuff. I'm looking at some of the things that that he confessed. He confessed sins of idolatry and witchcraft, the shedding of innocent blood, sins of political hypocrisy, dishonesty, intrigue, betrayal, pride, tribalism, sectarianism laziness, indifference, irresponsibility, corruption, bribery, sins of sexual immorality, drunkenness, and debauchery, sins of rebellion, insubordination, strife, and conflict, unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, and revenge, and then uh, finished by dedicating the nation of Uganda to God. Amen. This is, you know, and, and one of the comments that, was, that I made that was in the article that you're referencing is, you know, watch for Uganda. To, to, to have a transformation as a result of this. God is going to bless that nation and, uh, and in contrast to what's happening in, to the Western countries that are all in decline right now. And I'm looking at what the president prayed, Museveni of Uganda. We want Uganda to be known as a nation that fears God and as a nation whose foundations are firmly rooted in righteousness and justice to fulfill what the Bible says in Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is is the Lord. Would we have leaders like that in America today? Thank you, Scott well, we Lively praying. with Defend the Thank Family you, International. Thanks for taking time to be with us, Scott, and God bless you. God bless you, you Brian. Bye now. Scott Lively. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Focal Point AFR Talk. Don't go anywhere. Okay, that was a good interview. We got to actually see this uh, missionary pastor, Scott Lively. Um, a picture of him at least we got to hear him but another footnote to the whole Nigeria uh, Ugandan uh, situation there uh, there was a another controversy that erupted around the same time when these charges were brought against uh, Scott Lively and, and doing what he was doing uh, just what doing what a pastor would do, teach what the Bible says about this sin and teach and encourage people to not accept it and not normalize it in society. So basically doing what any pastor would do, he's being a faithful servant of Jesus Christ. And he was criticized, he was sued in a court of for crimes against humanity, ridiculous trumped up charges, just totally preposterous. But another footnote to that whole battle against the uh, Western influence in uh, Uganda, and there was a viral video that was on YouTube that showed a Ugandan pastor. This is not a missionary, this was not an American pastor, but this was a Ugandan pastor who was teaching Ugandans the dangers of homosexuality, the dangers of for the health of the nation, the practices. And who can doubt that widespread homosexuality is a high, uh, health crisis in any nation that embraces it? Just look at our country here, the AIDS epidemic. AIDS would not have spread the way it spread and killed all those people if homosexuality and a common sense policy on homosexuality existed in the US. Ironically, the aid the activists 
the homosexual activists actually hurt their own community. And I, I don't usually refer to uh, communities around a sin, you know, like the adulterous community, adulterer community, the pornography community, the pedophile community, bestiality community, the you name the sin and then build a community around it. I don't usually refer to sins and then the community of people who participate in that sin and refer to them as a community. But the LGBT community wants to identify themselves that way by their sin. And so this pastor in Uganda was simply pointing out all of the dangers to society of embracing and normalizing homosexuality and he was describing some of the sick and ridiculous and nasty and dirty practices of the homosexual quote community some of their actual practices and the filthiness of it all and his viral video showed the reality of this sin and he was laughed at by millions uh, around the country here in the US because of the LGBT backlash against his video and his uh, famous uh, slogan that became viral uh, all over YouTube a few years back was don't eat the poo-poo and you can Google it you can look it up on YouTube but his presentation was actually right on and was actually factual and was actually accurate but it doesn't matter see because the LGBT community has a propaganda machinery and they need to influence everyone to not look at facts, not look at actual practices, what people in the disgusting practice of homosexuality actually do. They don't want people to know what they actually do when they are engaged in this sin. And so they like to use a lot of generalities. They like to use a lot of flowery language. They like to normalize it. That's the whole process of normalization. So. Scott Lively, the missionary pastor, went to Uganda and he began to tell the people about, okay, this is what happens in a nation that embraces this sin. This is what happens when activists, LGBT activists, are allowed to just run wild, propagandize, distort the truth, and spread lies. This is what happens. And he described it. And so the Ugandan people didn't want that to happen in their nation. And so they voted in very strict laws. The leaders passed very strict laws against homosexuality to their credit. And there's nothing wrong with that. It makes a lot of sense. Even though it gets a lot of bad press in the mainstream media in the United States and the West, because we're we're going through our own path of self-destruction on this whole issue. So that's just another uh, aspect of Uganda and the Christian presence in Uganda. I'm glad to say that the Christianity there is really influencing society. It's really getting into every nook and cranny of society, which is great. Sadly enough, in our own nation, Christianity is becoming so diluted and so weak and ineffective that you couldn't even tell that there were so many churches in our country and so many Christians in our country and so many Christian leaders in our country. You wouldn't even know it by the way things are moving. But in that small, tiny African nation of 25 million or so, Christianity is actually making quite a bit of progress. We need to pray for Uganda and pray that they can actually influence us in many different important areas.
as we are going down and we need the help of the Ugandan Christians in our own culture here. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you back on another episode of Christ and Culture. God bless. John, why is homosexuality wrong? With every uh, sin, there are multiple levels of why it's uh, offensive to God and to be avoided. Um, the simplest is clearly to say the Bible says it is. And, and we should start there, and if we can go deeper, that's, that's good. Uh, I think it's implied clearly, it's spoken clearly in Romans 1. Uh, 24 to 29 that it is wrong and to be avoided and I think Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 10 lists a very unusual phrase about homosexuality where he says those who do such things and he lists it along with greed and covetousness and other sins is not unique by itself in this those who do such things will not enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, if, if you know that it's wrong and you say, I don't care that it's wrong, I don't care what God says, I'm going to do that thing, that's an indication that you're not going into the kingdom of heaven. Now, that, that's just the it's wrong, don't do it authority answer. The question, why would the Bible say that, is also multi-layered. Number one, um, the, the Bible sets up at the beginning a man and a woman become one flesh. And that's God's way of doing sexuality. Sexuality is God's idea. And we should learn from God what it is. And it's a man uh, and a woman created a co in co beautifully complementary ways so that they form one flesh. And to try to do it another way is a distortion. It's a corruption. It's a dysfunction of the way God made it. That's number two. Number three, and this is probably the only other one I'll give, is that as I reflect on Romans 1 and the way Paul unpacks uh, the problem with homosexuality, it appears to me that Paul is saying something like, like this. Um, when you exchange the glory of God for idols, the main one that you exchange the glory of God for is yourself. The idol that you have is yourself. Well, what sex is yourself? Your sex is your sex self. My self is male. If you're a woman watching this, your sex is female. And he seems to draw out the fact that in exchanging God for our most cherished idol, which is usually self, we are prone to fall in love with the same sex. So, implication, same-sex attraction is a dysfunctional form of idolatry. Now, there are other kinds. Don't, don't hear me saying that homosexual temptations are the only way that kind of self-idolatry emerges. But I think if you, if you go to Romans 1, 24 to 29, and just think that through yourself.